Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the crash course on React State Management with Zustand. Now obviously the very first question that comes around is that why Zustand? Why not Redux or Redux Toolkit? This is very popular these days. Yes, Redux Toolkit exists. Yes, Context API exists. But the features that I have seen in the Zustand and the simplicity that I've seen in the state management is just simply amazing and mind-blowing in Zustand. The things could be so much easier, I could have never imagined that. And that's what Zustand gives us. Zustand is absolutely production ready. We have even pushed it in one of our projects in the production itself and we are absolutely loving it. Now surely Redux Toolkit and all those are absolutely amazing product. They're being used in industry quite a lot and we'll talk about them in some another video. But first, let me talk about what is the state management. This is a really simple and easy concept. So let's just say this is a water bottle and this bottle holds one liter of uh, water here. Somebody came into my office, John, and he said, hey John, how much water this bottle is holding? He said, hey, one liter. Another one, Justin came in and Justin said, hey, how much water is there in this bottle? And Justin said 500, lit 500 milliliters. Another guy, Robin, came in and Robin said, how much water is there in this bottle? Now it's only 250 milliliters. Now you might be saying, hey, one of them is definitely saying true, then all of them are saying lies, but that's not true. When first guy came in, he said the, he saw the water bottle in another state when nobody actually drank from it. Another guy came in, somebody was consuming the water in that and third guy also saw another state of this water bottle. Now this shows that how ambiguous things can be. If you don't track the exact state, the truth, there's a single source of the truth into the state. Now this exact same concept is being utilized into the web world as well. There is only a single truth but not all the components that we are designing in React are aware about that state or that truth. Now how they should be rendering that information is what state management is all about. I know you have seen a lot of complex applications or complex explanation on that but in the reality that's all it is about. That what is the truth of that variable information is and how your uh, components are rendering it. That's all about state management. Now this has been handled by a single store or a single place where all information goes and everybody takes that information from there. And that is why you see in the Redux toolkit and pretty much every place that there is a single store. Now it's not just like that, there's a flux, there's there is a Redux toolkit, previously it was Redux, Context API tried to do it, did it as well. But what I saw in the Zustand is that is mind blowing. This is so much easier. So in this video, we're going to be creating a simple uh, kind of a basic app to see and understand how Zustand works and how you can use that in your application. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So first, let me bring you to the Zustand web page. We will be studying the documentation together, of course, just like we always do a little bit of that. So this is the Zustand up here. And as I can see, it is a, a small, fast, scalable, bare bones state management solution, simplified flux principle. In case you are not aware of that, Redux toolkit also follows the simplified flux principle. That's what this is same all about. What I absolutely love about it is there is no too much of the boilerplate code that is involved. It's really, really simple in the Zustan. So why not go ahead and just create a project? So let me go up here. So let's go and move on to uh, desktop. And I do have a folder, YouTube, and we're going to go ahead and create a project into this. So simply going npx, uh, create React app. Oops, create React app and let's call this one as uh, just tute looks fine okay so let's go ahead and work on with that let's let me go ahead and create this project quickly shouldn't take much of the time finally the moment i say it doesn't it should not take much of the time it always takes much time so let's go ahead and go into this just tute and fire up our VS code, our all time favorite code element up here. Let's go ahead and work on with that. So here we go, simple VS code editor. There we go, nice and easy. And we can see this project is obviously working. So let me go ahead and run a simple version of it. So npm start should do it. And since the project is bare bone, it shouldn't take much of the time to load it up. There we go. We should have the bare React project. Thank goodness they have changed the basic color. White was not going through with that. Okay, moving on. 
The only thing that we are going to work first is this app.css. I'll be providing you some CSS file. The code will be attached in the link in the description section. We are not here to talk about the CSS. That is why we need to change it and I'll be throwing up some CSS. It's not, anything is not fancy here. Uh, we just have some of the main containers so that things can be aligned into the center. We have some forms because obviously if we are talking about state management, form need to be included so that how data can be pulled uh, from the form into the store and from the store to the actual component where it is being rendered. Simple form inputs, some of the course item display. So basically we are creating a simple course uh, project in which anybody can add a course name and can tick mark that I've completed that course. Really simple going with that. And we have course, delete button and everything. Okay, let's go ahead and save this one. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Zustent. So there we go, yeah, looks really bad, but don't you worry. Now installation is pretty simple. We simply go ahead and say npm Zustent and should do the magic for us. Let's go ahead and stop this one, move it up and install Zustent. And that's it. You don't need any other uh, package or library or anything for that. We can go ahead and just simply do npm start. So once the stand is actually installed, it does show you a couple of things. Let me show you where that is. There we go. All you got to do is create a store. Now Zustend is basically primarily uh, dependent on hooks, which is the best thing about it. Everything is hook in the Zustend. So whenever you create a store, uh, it just says a hook, use a store, and you create a store based on that. So store is a central place of the truth. If any component wants to know that what is the current value of that particular element, he goes to the store and asks from there. Really simple. Now we go ahead and do that. And this is all we need to do. Import create Zustan and create a store with that. In the store, if you want to manipulate any of the element, you just use a set hook, just like we use use state, uh, setting for the state and similar like that. So you just use set to set any variables or anything. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Now, surely uh, we'll talk about how the binding of the component works and a little bit more details on that. But first, let's go ahead and move on to the code part. So how we're going to go ahead and move into the code part. So this is our source code up here. We're going to go ahead and create a new folder into this one. And let's call this one as simply app. Now, once we have this app, this app is going to be our central place or central repository of the truth. Basically, the store will go in here. So let's go ahead and right click new file. And we're going to go ahead and say course store JS, of course. Now, let's go ahead and add the Zustend feature up here. So it's really simple. We're going to go ahead and say import create from. And obviously, this is going to come from the Zustend. This is what we saw in the documentation just a moment ago. Now, there are a couple of optional features as well. So let me walk you through with them in case and surely in the production app, you are going to need uh, that as well. So Zustend, once you include that, you can actually put up a slash and you can see there is a lot of things that Zustend actually provide. Uh, the context, index, middleware and a whole lot of things. One more thing that is available is middleware. Now, middleware is not really compulsory. In the middleware, if you want further information to be checkable in the browser, just like we do in the Redux, you can actually do that and middleware will help you to check that information in the browser itself. Now, what we're going to bring in from here is, of course, dev tools, because that's are going to help us. We are also going to use persist. Now, what is this persist? Now, persist is not ideal in all situations, but in certain condition, it makes sense. In the persist, you can just store that all store information into the local storage of browser. Now, maybe that is a use case for you, maybe not. But again, you decide that part. Okay, this is all good. Now let's move forward. So how do we create a store? Now, in case you are coming up from a Redux background or something, I can understand you might be thinking there's a lot of uh, boilerplate, but that's not the case. We can go ahead and simply say, I want to create a code store. And then you simply go ahead and fire up your hooks just like that. And we're going to be just going like that. And that is all it needs. Now in the core store, we are going to use set. Now set is being used simply and simply for to change any of the state of any variable or any information, object, whatever you like to call that. So we'll be utilizing that. And then further down the road, let's open up an object and go for that. Now first I have to define what is the initial state of that parameter which I'm trying to manipulate. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, I'll be storing a course list. So there we go, a simple array, and that's what we have. Now, once we have this initial state, after that, we're gonna defining a few actions. Yeah, I know actions is a terminology from the Redux world, but that's what it is, actions. Basically, the manipulator, who will be manipulating. So data will be coming in or going out. So how that needs to work? 
If I want to add a course into that, how that's going to work. If I want to update the existing course, how that will work. If I want to delete any course, how that will work. You simply define up here. Yes, you can do that into a separate file as well, but that's what we need to do. So let's just say I define a simple add course. Now add course, what's going to do? Obviously it needs to take a course. So course will be passed to this and then simply go ahead and let's add this into the course array. Now this is the only thing where you need to pay too much of attention. So we'll be using this set. Remember in the line five, we brought in the set. Okay. So in the set, we're going to go ahead and work like that. So this is the set and let's go ahead and first fill this up. So, oops, not like that. So in the set, we'll go and we'll be saying that, hey, first give me a state. So it will give the existing state of whatever the variable you are looking up for. Further down the road, let's fire up the arrow key. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and ask for the courses. I should name, rename this as courses. And this one is going to be courses. So we brought in the courses. Now, let's go ahead and use our classic JavaScript. So we're gonna say, hey, just give me existing course. And here we're gonna simply say, let's spread it out, courses state.courses state.courses now let me walk you through what happened just right there and let's put it up a comma for cleaning purpose so what i'm saying is in this state that hey state is responsible for doing any manipulation to this variable that you have created because it's a store variable and after that what you are doing is you are taking access of the state state will be responsible for giving you the most updated state of this variable or any more variable that you have Further down the road, I said that, hey, I have this courses now access to this one. Now, all I'm going to do is simply say that, hey, take the new course that is coming up from here, put it at the front, or maybe you want to put it back, however you want to do. And then I'm just spreading the existing state. So existing value goes in, but the new value also goes in. And that's what majorly this is all about. And probably I'm missing some of the parts. So I should actually wrap this entire thing into a parenthesis as well. Uh, there we go should be fine and happy just basics okay now that you understand that how the add course work it shouldn't be much of a big deal to create other things if you are familiar with how to remove this stuff as well so let's just go ahead and work on the remove course feature as well and you get the idea that how that is going to work in so we're going to go ahead and fire this up let's go ahead and put up an object in order to remove any course, you're going to need an id maybe that's coming from mongodb or wherever you like but that's all it takes now, how are we going to do that? Again, yes, you got it right. We need to use the set. Set is going to provide you the access to existing state. We need that. And then we can further down the road, can have this and then inside there. And let me scroll this. There we go. How we can remove it? Pretty simple. The new variable will be updating this courses array. So we need to first inquire that does this ID exist or not? So we're going to go ahead and say state dot courses dot and let's put up a filter on that so filter is going to just remove that so in the filter further down the road we're going to say that i need each element of the courses so for each course that you are having let's go ahead and run a function on each of that so c dot id will be putting up an id for each of the course obviously that's going to happen and then we are going to say if that doesn't match to the course id that is provided so what does the filter function does whatever the thing it uh, matches so basically simple we are looking up for that if the course id matches with the id that is being provided uh, that will not be in there and rest everything who doesn't match gets into the filter so yeah reverse logic of that pretty simple if you have seen the javascript filter uh, i think i'm over explaining this stuff up here okay moving forward further we'll be needing a state as well that whether the course is being completed whether somebody has actually tick marked that course or not so just final one uh, but surely you can add more features if you like that so we're going to go for uh, the toggle course status there we go now once we have this course toggle status obviously we're going to need a course id for that also and further down the road just like that now again, really simple. Anything we do, we manipulate it via the state. So first, let's get access to state. There we go. Move like that. And this is one. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to map through all of them. So let's go ahead and do that. So courses will be manipulated like this. So we'll be having a state dot courses. And let's go ahead and map through all of them. 
So once we got a map through all of it, then we are going to go ahead and say, hey, for each of the cores or C, whatever you like to put in, let's go ahead and work on with that. Then further down the road, we're going to say that cores dot ID, if that is marked as completed, then uh, what we're going to do, let's put up a ternary operator, we'll do something and otherwise we'll do something. So here, what we're going to do is, let's pull it up like that. And we're going to say, hey, give me all the courses first, course, existing course, and then we're going to go ahead and say, in all of the courses, we are going to put up a name as well as ID, as well as is this course marked as completed or not. So we're gonna just toggle that completed. Right now we are deciding these things on the go. We're going to just toggle that. So we're going to say mark whatever the course dot completed is. So I hope you are getting that. So it's really simple. The course that we are designing is an object which is having three features, the name of it, and the ID, the unique ID that we'll be creating for it. And after that, we are having a simple toggle down that whether it is completed or not. So pretty simple ID, course name, and the completed toggle feature. Okay, so this is all done. Now, otherwise, if that ID is uh, not being passed on, then we are going to just return that course. So pretty simple. Let me go ahead and change the view of it. So word wrap should, okay, now looking up nice. Okay, so this is all the basics. I hope you got it pretty simple that this is how the stores are being created into that. But one more thing, we have also imported these dev tools in Persis. Create, we are using a lot, uh, but we need to actually go through with that. So first, let's export this one, existing one. So we're gonna go ahead and simply say export default and use course store. So once we go ahead and do that, uh, it should be really simple. Again, use is coming up from the Zustand itself. Let me show you that. So whenever we need to export that, and again, all of this is coming up from, remember this is use a store. And then we are simply saying creating. Everything is hooks into that. If you go a little bit on that, uh, use a store, use a store. So everything is coming up from here. It's nothing like I'm creating anything out of the thin air. Okay. Now this is all good, but we also need to go ahead and create this one. As you saw in the documentation as well, we need to simply go ahead and say, hey, uh, use this create. Let me show you that. This create. So we are saying use a store and we are simply going ahead and creating this as well. Let me show you further. And so far this course store is not being used anywhere. So we need to use that obviously. Let's go ahead and write that code. So let's further go down and we're going to say, const and this time we are going to say use course store so again let me explain that a little bit further we have used we have first created this course store now we want to use that so that anybody can push in data to it and accept the data from it and for that we are creating this and the final export is going to be this one this might be a confusing state because some people might be thinking that we need to export this one out no you don't need to because you need to create a store out of it now we'll be naming our store as use uh, course store and that is created in the just end by simply saying create and there we go now we can throw it now, of course, you can throw it directly. There is no need of writing additional code for this, but since we have imported the dev tools, let's go ahead and use that. And in the dev tools, further down the road, we would like to persist everything. So we're going to say, persist, there we go. What do you want to persist? I want to persist the core store. Now further, we need to provide a name because we are storing that into the local storage. So there we go. And let's go ahead and provide a name for it. And the name is going to be simply courses and that's pretty much it okay let me save this okay so now we have learned that how we can create a store in the Zustand. it's pretty simple let me walk you through just the three step first and foremost you go ahead and import everything pretty simple in that then we simply go ahead and say course store and we use a set method out of it everywhere now this is not truly creating a, a state itself or a store itself the store is being created in the line number 24 so all the values and all of this is actually going up here. Once we simply say that we want to use the course store, use course store that is being created and this is being created based on the course store that we have created just above. There we go. And this we are storing into the local storage. But again, there are many other ways. If you want me to discuss them, surely we can discuss that. 
Okay, so this is the basics that we have created the store. Now, next up, we need to do a little bit more. Now we need to learn how we can use this store because just creating the store is not going to work. So in the next video, let's go ahead and check out that how we can actually use this store in our components.